I'm Spencer Tweedy. I'm a drummer, and we're at the Wilco Loft Recording Studio in Chicago. Um, I've got the new JHS 500 series modules that we're gonna play with and hopefully make some cool drum sounds. This is the drum kit that I've been using to record here for a while now. It's a mixture of old drums and new drums, like this Rogers kick, um, a new CNC floor tom that they made for us, a Yamaha snare, and Zildjian Constantinople hi-hats. We use a Royer on the overhead, an R121, an R820 on kick, and a 441 on snare. And over there, there's a Norman 67 for the room mic. All right, so let's play around with these modules and see if we can make some cool sounds. We're gonna start with just a little bit of color box, crunching a tiny bit on, this one will be on the snare drum, and this one's on the overhead. Um, and we've also got a Chandler TG1 limiter on the overhead, just doing a little bit of compression and a little bit of DBX 160A on the snare drum. Um, just a couple of, couple of decibels, which is what we usually do when we're recording drums here. But yeah, so this is just a little bit of color box on the overhead and the snare mics. So you can hear it on the snare drum, it's doing a little bit of crunch. And you can hear it on the hi-hat where it's just sort of smoothing out the, the hi-hat cymbals a little bit. We are lucky enough to have a Neve sidecar here, a, ten, a bunch of 1073 modules. And I think that's what the color box is based off of. And what I like about that is if you can use it to crunch drum signals a little bit, you're mellowing out the cymbals and you're just generally smoothing it over. Um, which is sort of what tape might have done in the past or what, you know, using all sorts of other transformer-based uh, uh, units would have done to drum signals instead of old school recording. But um, it mellows it out. But one thing that's kind of interesting is that the color box has this air band, which is at like 50% saturation right now, and that's adding a little bit of high frequency uh, signal back in and you can you can definitely hear it on the snare cuz this is a really dry a really really dark snare normally and it's cool it gives it some attack i think that it might be fun to push the color box a little bit more since we already did some stuff with the color box on a sort of moderate setting um, it's if you've used a color box from JHS the you know the original foot pedal version um, you know that it's capable of some pretty ridiculous fuzz, some pretty ridiculous crunch. Um, and I, let's, so let's try to get to those levels, but in the 500 series module. So I'll crank up the pre-volume a little bit, and then I'll, um, or, and also the step. And then maybe we'll play with that a little bit, and then maybe let's, um, do some sculpting with the EQ. There's a really robust whole EQ section on these guys with a lot of options. Let's try to dial back some of that air band. 
Let's see. You can hear it coming down a lot in the overhead. Oh, so without the airband, it sounds a lot closer to a 1073 module, uh, to my ears at least, to like an original Neve sidecar. Um, it's not lacking that. It's going back to that dry, dark tone. Um, let's play with that a little bit. That's really nice. So we've got the air all the way down now. And I think it might be cool if we uh, manipulate like the mid frequencies, so. We've done some pretty radical EQing on the overhead. A little bit of uh, rolling out, a little bit of a low pass filter on the snare and adding mid in. I don't know exactly what part of the spectrum this would correspond with, but we've got the mid shift over at like 75 or 80 percent so that's um and at like maximum boost and it's pretty crunchy with the uh amount of gain we have going into each of them so that's gonna sound hopefully pretty old school and pretty dirty pretty cool. There's a lot of different stuff to do with the EQ on the color box, but once you get down to it, it's really just three bands and an extra four, a fourth air band. Um, you can use the shift to move the, the boost or cut points around in the mid and the low. And then there's even a Q option for bass, which obviously will let you choose the intensity of that point for the, for the bass boosting or cutting. And uh, you can carve it up real good. Let's try adding some of the super bolt distortion on the overhead microphone. Um, see how we can mess it up. Ooh, I can already hear it. Pretty crunchy. I will just say before we move on that the Super Bowl is really cool. Not only does it sound great, but it's one of the best looking 500 series face plates I've ever seen before. Kind of looks like a Telefunken preamp or something like that. And I love it. But uh, let's try to mess with the Emperor, the chorus and vibrato unit. And I think it'll be cool because I never put chorus on drums and I never put vibrato on drums, but I do put sometimes artificial tape warble on a on an overhead signal, um, something to you know, just a little bit of modulation because I love when you hear cymbals on or hi hats on old recordings and it, you can hear the pitch sort of dipping or wavering with the tape um, and and like flutter. And we might be able to accomplish something like that with this. And if not, we'll just make something super weird and disgusting. This is the uh, Super Bolt distortion with some Emperor vibrato going on. And it's kind of cool on a pitched drum like a floor tile. cool. 
The 500 series stuff is really cool because unlike normal 19 inch rack gear, um, you can put it in a lunchbox. It's got a smaller footprint and if you want to, you can even set up a lunchbox next to your drum kit like I have here and be able to mess with your preamp, mess with the color box preamp or whatever else you have while you're playing. Um, that's really helpful if you're a drummer recording yourself like I do sometimes. It's just a lot easier to deal with than a, a full standard 19 inch rack. Plus that can be kind of intimidating having a lot of having many, many rack units of 19 inch stuff. But these guys are tiny and they look cool and they sound great. Thank you for watching. That was really fun and I hope you are able to check out these JHS modules. Hello.